Well, today we're finally gonna tear apart the rear suspension. I'm, uh, I've already lubricated all the uh, rusty nuts and bolts uh, with penetrating oil, hopefully to make them a little easier to get off. Uh, rather than going through all the detail of every nut and bolt being replaced, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and begin the disassembly. And when we get it apart, I'll show you what we've done and tell you any pitfalls we ran into along the way. In removing the rear springs, this one is completely loose at the moment. Uh, a few tips. One is you want to jack up the truck and use some jack stands about the end of the cab. There's really no weight, hardly at all, on the back, so you're not going to worry about bending your frame or anything, but that'll support the back end of the truck. I've got two more jack stands below the, the rear end down there. In getting the springs out, they're under tension, so you want to have the back end of the frame high enough so that you can lower the rear axle until you can get a little movement out of the uh, bolts that hold the, the rear of the spring to the shackle. Uh, once you do that and get that top bolt out, the rest is easy. Then I unbolted my spring pack uh, right here from the axle and then popped the last bolt out from the front. Also, do one side at a time. This will help prevent the rear axle from twisting and turning and moving and it'll keep it in uh, the right position. So now we're gonna take the spring out, pop out these old bushings and put in some new ones. Okay, in replacing the bushings on the rear leaf springs, they're fairly simple uh, compared to your other bushings. One side has a flange on it like this. So that's gonna be the top. And the other side looks like this where it, it enters the, uh, the hole. So we're gonna push it out. I'm gonna use a socket with a steel plate on top of it to, uh, to push that down and push it out and then we'll press them in the same way. These have been in there a long time, so they may be a little stubborn, but uh, here's what we're gonna use. These are Moog K200-897s. I'll have all the information listed below the video and the cost, as usual, to keep up with uh, what we're spending on the project. After pushing the old bushing out, clean up the hole, put a little bit of lube on this one, and pushing it in from the opposite side so that they go in the same way they came out. This is the bushing. That's what the old bushing looks like before we get pressed it out. And here's the new one pressed in. Like I say, they go in much easier than they came out because they've been stuck in that spot for about 30 years now. So now, three more to go. Okay, the next step is going to be to replace this passenger side front hanger with the new one. Looks quite a bit different. But uh, it's pretty straightforward. We just need to grind out these rivets that hold in. There's four of them that hold this old hanger in, and we'll use the same holes to place the new hanger. I'm using a fiberglass welding blanket laid over the back portion of the cab to protect the paint from the flying sparks. There's a few things some of the videos uh, don't show you when it comes to lowering these trucks. This is the passenger side, and in order to make the bracket fit right in here, you can see that the support right here for the bed has to be trimmed. And you gotta take out a piece about like that. It's about an inch by about three inches, and that's just so that this, you can see how close it will mount to the frame, and this bracket would be in the way. So we'll get it mounted up here and you can see better, but I haven't found anybody yet that will tell you about that. And it's also true for the other side as well. Okay, something we're gonna try that's a little different uh, when it comes to mounting the shocks, instead of using shock extenders that mount to the lower mounting point of the shock uh, at the rear axle to drop it down a couple of inches, we have a pair that mounts on the upper portion of the shock so that it does not hang farther down below your rear axle. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, your normal shock mounting position looks like this on the top and this on the bottom. And then you can use a shock extender when you're lowering your truck to lower that shock down a bit more, but then it's closer to the ground and reduces your ground clearance. What we're gonna do is something a little different. Uh, we're working on the passenger side right now and I've removed the stock shock and here's the upper mounting position. You drill one hole in the frame where my thumb is and that's it. And you can see the positioning of this uh, it puts it higher above the frame, should be below the bed of the truck. 
and we'll also alter the angle of your shock. So let's get this mounted up and mount a shock and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The passenger side is done. As you can see on the front hanger, as I mentioned before, it was necessary to notch the front bed mount. Not a whole lot, but it is necessary to notch that in order to get the new, uh, get the new hanger in there. Uh, the front and rear bushings have been replaced with Moog components. Uh, here's the two inch uh, rear shackle. It's all been cleaned up. The shock, uh, it has the stock and original lower shock mount, but the upper mount looks like this. And this is a Belltech item. And it's pretty cool because it gives you an extra two inches of travel, but it puts the shock on the extension on the top side rather than the bottom. It still fits under the bed and it alters the angle of your shock to a better angle. With the passenger side being finished, now we're gonna tackle the driver's side. There are some differences and I'll point those out to you. The driver's side hanger is a little bit more complicated than the passenger side because you've got, well, several things going on. You've got your emergency brake cables going through the bracket itself. There's no notch. You've also got on the back side your gas tank and wiring. So you have to be more careful when you grind off these uh, rivets. If you have to get in behind there, which eventually we're going to have to do anyway, uh, when we bolt in the new bracket to access the nuts, uh, we're going to have to probably drop the gas tank, which is a good time if you haven't already done it to uh, drain it down as much as possible so you have less weight to deal with. So what I'm going to do at this point is to cut a little notch in both of these circles where the emergency brake cables go so I can pull those cables out and then we can start working on the rivets themselves. Okay, here you can see a couple, I cut a couple of small notches and now the emergency brake will come out easily on this side. Okay, we got these two rivets, the head's knocked off. These are easy enough to get to. However, these two on the inside are a little more difficult just because you've got your emergency brake cables in the way, they're stiff, uh, and you're getting up towards the top of the cab and this bracket. So what I found on the other side is, once you can get this lower rivet out, uh, you can use a pry bar under the bracket itself to kind of to kind of pop it loose. Uh, although the top uh, nut or the top rivet is still in place, and then you can uh, you can swivel this bracket down so that the angle of this here is out of the way, and that makes it easier to get that rivet out. Here we've got the three rivets knocked out I talked about. In the last one, we've turned the bracket down so that we can access it a little bit better. If you have access to an air hammer, that definitely helps. You can use a hammer and a chisel, but it's just a lot more work. Also at this point, we're gonna to need to drop the gas tank. And as you can see, it's pretty tight to the frame rail here and the bolts that you need to get to on the inside, I cannot get my hand in there uh, or from the bottom because you've got all these lines going through there and it's going to be easier just to drop the tank. Also, this truck has been sitting for nearly a year and a half and there's probably a bunch of crud in the gas tank or the gas, the gas that's been in it uh, has been turning to varnish. So I may need to, depending on the amount of gas in the tank, take it and have it vetted and cleaned out and make sure everything's good. I don't want to trash out my new engine and injectors and everything with crummy fuel just because I skipped a step. This is, this is looking at the top of the gas tank and this is a fuel sending unit pump and your hoses that uh, go to the filler. So it loosens the clamps here and here. These are low pressure. I'm going to remove these and then there's a ring in here that has to turn counterclockwise to unlock it and uh, break the seal so I can pull this directly out. So we're gonna take care of that. And once I get it out, I'll show you what it looks like. To remove the fuel pump and the filter assembly, you need to disconnect your lines right here. Uh, the middle line is just a little squeeze clamp and that'll pull right off. It's probably the vent tube. These other two, which would be the feed and the return, uh, are both uh, a 16 millimeter and a 19 millimeter. So you'll need those wrenches ahead of time to be able to remove these lines without kinking that tube. Remove the lines that were attached here. Now we can remove, safely remove 
the whole assembly. And this has to be knocked in one direction. That should lift right out. And here's the old assembly. And you can see uh, the sock area, the float. This is the actual pump. And we'll, uh, in a separate video, we'll be replacing that pump. The driver's side hanger is installed. It can be done without dropping the gas tank. Uh, you could probably even do it with the bed on, but it would be just a lot more difficult. And if you look on the inside, you can see why. So you've just got all your fuel lines in there, some electrical lines, and uh, the clearances are tight. It's just easier if you can at least move the gas tank out of the way to gain access to those bolts. We got the gas tank out. It had about four or five gallons of old fuel in it. We dumped that out and some containers we're gonna dispose of. And uh, the inside of the tank looks really good. Uh, the suspension, uh, the four inch rear drop is complete. The uh, hangers in front are installed. Now this one, we haven't tightened up this bolt yet because this has a bracket for your emergency brake. And before we find the correct position on that, we'll have to uh, reroute the emergency brake lines and see where they're gonna go. But that's basically in place. And doing it without the gas tank in place was much easier. You can see the passenger side over here, uh, there's this, tons of room, so it's not a problem. Uh, let's see, we've got the uh, shock extenders in place. That's what it looks like from the side. It mounts it at a, a better angle. It clears everything. And then the rear shackles, we already had those, but I used some washers to uh, even up the springs. Uh, in the back, they were off a bit. Well, we've got the lowering accomplished on the back of the truck. And uh, it's not that difficult, but there are some things to be looking out for. Uh, just know that before you begin the process, you're gonna need a few tools. It'll help to have a grinder, a cutoff wheel to uh, notch those front bed supports so that the uh, hangers will mount properly. Uh, movement of the gas tank is a big help. You don't have to do it, but it makes life a lot simpler if you do. Got a few more projects lined up here to take care of this week. We need to handle the rear sway bar, rear disc brakes, and putting in the fuel pump uh, in preparation for that LS swap. So hang around. Uh, if you like what we're doing, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.